Samsung SDI, the Korean giant's battery biz, on Tuesday promised EV batteries that can charge to 80% capacity in a mere 9 minutes, plus models that can perform at that level for 20 years. The ultra-fast charging battery will enter production in 2026. The long-lived product will start rolling off factory floors in 2029. Samsung SDI teased the tech in March of this year. At the 37th Electric Vehicle Symposium and Exposition, EVS 37, taking place this week in Seoul, it is also displaying an anode-free all-solid-state battery, ASB, with a 900 watt-hour per litre density, which it eyes to start mass-producing in 2027. Hello and thank you for joining us. Before we delve further, we kindly ask you to support us by liking this video, subscribing and activating notifications to stay updated on our latest content. Remember, sharing is caring. After this announcement, many onlooked made agitations on the DSL Reports Forum. But let's look at the possibility critically. In practicals and as of the current state of EVs, we don't think that today's cars would last that long. But if quality bearings, front-end parts are used, 20 years is possible, or some 100,000 plus miles before maintenance. Bearing grease evaporates, so to speak. But there are cheap hub bearings, better quality ones, and bearings that didn't get enough grease when assembled. Solid-state batteries are considered a significant step up from lithium-ion due to their higher energy density, faster charging capabilities and perceived safety as ASBs are less likely to catch fire. Samsung's already tried to reduce the likelihood its kit catches fire, a live issue as lithium-ion-powered appliances and e-bikes spark domestic blazes that have regulators worried that low-quality products increase risks. The Korean champ's approach is to use vents that exhaust heat and gas, so that if its batteries are involved in an accident or fire, the chances of thermal runaway are reduced. New products from the company, such as 46 VI batteries, a measure of battery diameter, are also part of the exhibition, along with a cell-to-pack CTP concept that increases energy density yet decreases cost, stated Samsung. The Chibel's battery unit pitched the battery advancements as supergap technology that will pioneer the future global EV market. Improving battery performance is essential to advance the world's transition to EVs. Many industry players are therefore working to improve the technology. Samsung itself has even purchased part of a nickel mine to safeguard its supply chain for the raw materials needed to make batteries. Japanese automaker Toyota has several battery undertakings, including in joint ventures with Panasonic. The company has claimed it is ready to roll out its solid-state batteries with a range of 745 miles and charge time of 10 minutes by 2025. This revelation by Samsung because disturbing because it is no different from other things that have been said in the past. For example, we've been hearing that about climate disaster and we will run out of oil for the last 50 years, and we're not hoping those actually happen. Don't forget mid-1970s, when we were at the end of our natural gas supply, and all new housing was all electric, without gas lines even installed in the developments. My dad bought a house built in 78 that was all electric. A few years later, as new supplies of natural gas were discovered, so much we have plenty still. Early heat pumps sucked. About 18 years later, a replacement was much more efficient and kept the place much warmer. But within a few years of the build, the local gas utility got utility easement rights and laid gas lines. 
My dad never connected. Come to think of it, this may have limited the sale value of the house because he had a strong fear of carbon monoxide poisoning. I never knew why, especially since the previous house was a 57 baby boomer place with gas furnace and water heater and even a capped off gas range supply. Maybe a capped off gas dryer supply and a faic. There was never a problem with the gas appliances, other than wearing out. I remember the water heater rusting out and flooding the living room, but I think that was before I was school age. Another interesting point is that those who keep pushing fusion, saying it's only X years away, are generally the one who oppose nuke plants because of radiation hazard. When you explain to them that fusion is actually more powerful nukes, they seem completely unable to comprehend. Explain to them that nuclear weapons are fusion devices and they either walk away or start with, no they're not. Yeah, you can hear the misuse in their voice. Still, I'd like to see solar and fusion come to fruition. And solar to not require highly toxic and rare earth materials. Not gonna happen in my lifetime, but I've been rooting for solar since the 80s. Seemed feasible then, and it's come a long way, but not nearly far enough. I also remember a non-repeatable cold fusion experiment, claimed success in 89 or 90. Marcon 90 had a sort of unofficial cold fusion theme. After a year or two, it became apparent that it was a flawed experiment or outright lie, but fusion power seemed right around the corner then. Twenty-five-ish years later, it's no closer. This isn't cynicism, it's wisdom through experience. If it seems too good to be true, it is. Meanwhile, China's top EV battery maker, China's contemporary Amperex Technology Company, Limited, CITL, claimed last August that it had developed a lithium iron phosphate, LFP battery, that can power a car for a distance of 250 miles after just 10 minutes of charging. On a full charge, the battery is said to offer range of 435 miles. While battery innovation is welcome, growth in demand for EVs is slowing. This week, Elon Musk's EV venture Tesla reported sales fell 9% year-on-year as net profit plunged 55%. The company reportedly plans to lay off more than 10% of its staff globally. China, where economic growth is at the lowest level since the 1970s, isn't helping. And I in February... Bloomberg reported that global economic woes, saturation among early adopters and waning subsidies are also slowing EV adoption. That concludes today's discussion. Please remember to like, comment and share this content with fellow enthusiasts and relevant forums. Thank you and we eagerly anticipate your presence in our next episode.